Hi Curious People, we have a problem. On our AI project car, we have an issue with these. The servos have jitter when they stop moving. That makes the pan tilt hat we're going to use difficult. Let's chat about what went wrong and how to fix it. Here's our excellent camera mount, our pan tilt hat on our excellent project car, but the servos are shaking. That just won't do. To find the source of the jitter, we need to understand a little bit about servos and what makes the jitter happen in the first place. So let's contrast two kinds of motors you'd see in hobby projects. First, we have a continuous DC motor, which will run continuously as you apply a voltage. Second, we have a servo motor, which will move through an arc and will hold its position in that arc based on the signal applied. A servo is really a continuous motor driven by a controller in the bottom with a potentiometer to record its position in the arc and gearing to slow the output. To do this, a servo requires three connections, a ground, a five volt supply, and a PWM signal. Depending on the duration of the pulse in the signal, the servo will move to a corresponding angle in its rotation arc. Officially, this is called the duty cycle. The portion of your signal that is in the high position versus low. If your signals aren't clean, or your power source is weak, the servo will hunt for its rest location, like the wonderful little camera mount on my project car. So signal quality or power source is the problem. I know that Raspberry Pis have an issue with a clean clock output. That probably means the PWM signal is the culprit and has a high likelihood of wandering around and driving a changing duty cycle, making it hunt. To fix it, that means we have two choices. We can redesign the controller. I could use this handy hat I have laying around, but that would consume a lot of output ports. But for this project, we will need more ports. So I'd really like to not do that. Or change the way we control the servo. Shift from what I'd call keep it live method to move and kill method. Here's how things change. With my first approach with the keep it live method, we can keep the PWM signal applied to the servo and that will keep it in position. Keep the torque applied, but it also means the motors are active and susceptible to hunting or jitter. The other choice is the move and kill, but make short moves in the arc and then remove the signal, stopping the movement. That holds the servo in place, but with no power applied to the output, resulting in no jitter or hunting. The big drawback here is with no PWM signal applied, there's also no torque. So this can't be used for anything that needs the force to stay in place. I'm looking at you RC steering motors. Other issues with servos may see you wiring a separate power supply so the motor and controller can get more current. Servos pull a lot of current to move a load, particularly a heavy one. That draw can cause the signal to get messy or to crash your Raspberry Pi entirely if they're using a common power source. Watch out for that. An F3. This is what it looks like when we switch the code implemented on the Raspberry Pi to the move and kill method. Sweet, eh? It should work a lot better for the camera pan till hat we had on our AI project car. For those of you who want to see the setup of the servos work on a Raspberry Pi and the code difference between the move and kill method and the keep it live method approaches, here's a quick rundown of what that looks like. The pan tilt hat I used for the car build was a Pimerani unit here. I created connectors for the 5 volt and ground, then assigned the PWM signal input lines to GPIO ports. For this build, I used port 19 for vertical tilt and port 26 for horizontal pan. With the hat servo as attached, I created two versions of code the keep it live version and the move and kill version. Let's throw them up side by side. You'll notice that the main difference is at the end. 
For the Keep It Live version, we can directly set the destination in the arc. In the Move and Kill version, we need to increment the arc to its desired value and test its extent every time we move. We're turning the duty cycle to zero between them so that the position is held. The reason for the small increments is to minimize the chance for jitter to creep into the system while it's active. Simple enough. Hopefully now you understand a little bit about servos and what might be happening in your hobby project. You've got one way to get rid of jitter in the system. As with any design challenge, there's many ways to solve problems. I am a big proponent of the KISS system. There may be a more complex or elegant solution to solve an engineering challenge, but someone needs to implement and support the system that you are designing. And for that, simplicity is king. The reason why Southwest Airlines flew only one kind of jet and became the only profitable airline, simplicity. As a side note, this pushes our project one step further. Here is the project car functioning with two servos and four motors. Bingo. Next video, we take the car through to completion, physically at least. And we'll go through how skid steer works because it will be a skid steer remote control car like the old school fast tracks. We'll go through some of the design choices I've made for wiring up four motors and two controllers to achieve that skid steer. This will affect how the IX experiments work on the car and using it like a test bench. In the meantime, thanks for watching and learning a bit about servos. Keep creating and have fun. Cheers.